We all have those artists that we try to emulate, be it 2D or 3D. Something about them just grabs us and we want to emulate them in some way. And one of those artists for me is chasing artwork, Justin Curry. I've been following his style for probably close to a decade now. And he created his own style called Shattered Vector. And it's absolutely brilliant. I'll put a link to his page down below. And for years, I've wanted to do some type of homage, um, you know, a fan variation, uh, just to show how much I enjoy his style. And I've kind of messed with a couple things, doing some simple animations with some of his artwork and everything, but nothing I was ever really happy with. So what I ended up deciding to do was taking one of his pieces, his, his robotic Goku, and thought it would be fun to kind of do a 3D model, dust off my old 3D modeling skills, which I haven't used in a <coughs> decade. <coughs> uh. And, uh, you know, refamiliarize myself with the process of 3D modeling for future projects that I want to work on. And I thought that this style would lend kind of well to a more geometric, polygonal uh, style that can be afforded through 3D modeling if you're not going to sculpt. So that's what I did. I, I used his established Goku as the basis for this Vegeta. And, and I put my own twist on everything, but it, I wanted it to look like something uh, that was inspired by his style, by his shattered vector. And I will quit gushing now and go on into this. And like I said, I haven't done any 3D modeling in quite a while so a lot of it was uh, trial and error and I almost didn't make this video because there were so many errors but this was also important because it taught me what not to do and a lot of times as I've said before in previous videos learning what not to do is as important maybe more so than learning what to do properly and of course, I had a vision in my head as to what this should look like or could look like. And I think I got it fairly close realistically with the skill set that I started with. It's a it's a decent starting point. Uh, the main problem I had was the, the eyes getting the depth right once they got printed out. But all in all, it's not too shabby. Uh, the posing was interesting. You know, I, I, I rigged this in T-Pose so I could uh, rig it normally and, and move it like it would be a, an animated piece. But something went wrong. I had all kinds of difficulty and everything. So I just moved it piece by piece, uh, which isn't ideal. Uh, and I did a little bit of the uh, posing tool in the sculpting, uh, just to bend pieces ever so slightly to get them to look a bit more organic. Uh, went in, uh, put it in 3D Builder, uh, very basic program just to make sure there weren't any holes or anything, and out it popped. And the prints came off no problem. Uh, uh, there wasn't an actual problem with that. And then I just did a Zenithal and use the the paint method that I've been such a fan of recently, the, the Marco Frizzoni. Uh, you know, I, I made all of these into contrast paints, which is just diluting them down. And I didn't want to get too crazy. I wanted to stick with kind of more of an anime style with just basic colors uh, with, you know, one step highlight kind of deals. I found the, the city that he's standing on as some free models on Thingiverse. I'll also link those down below. And it's not that he's a giant robot. He could be a giant robot, but I was just trying to give it some type of perspective. And then, of course, I did my highlights with oil paints. Oil paints all the way. Absolutely love them. But as much as I painted this, it, 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 was, it was feeling a little 
a little flat in places. Like I got pretty discouraged because I thought that maybe it it wasn't as good. Uh, one main thing I did learn: if you're gonna model stuff to print, over exaggerate those edges and those those parts that you want to really stand out because that was a, a big problem. I had to go in like three or four times and just keep adding bulk to different parts to to get them to to uh, stand out as much as I wanted to so I could get some definition. I watch a lot of other YouTube creators and recently I had heard people talking a whole lot about panel lining and that is exactly what this needed. I don't do it a lot on the minis. I think it's either my style or the minis that I paint. But as soon as I started putting those black lines between everything, man, this thing came alive. It it looked 10 times better, 100 times better once I got all the that definition in and everything. And I also had some problem, like I said, the, the eyes on the face didn't come out. I, I'd put some on the side. So I did repaint the face five, six times just because I couldn't get the the metal to look right or at least how I wanted it. But yeah, ups and downs, everything included. I'm really happy that I did this. It's it's going to be a strong base for future projects that I already have going as per usual. Complete the ritual of YouTube, appease the small gods of the algorithm. Hit me a like if this was at all entertaining. Catch you on the next one.